Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well on the Tuesday. Yeah, I just wanted to talk a little bit about, uh, first of all, I hope the young people are doing well in school. I hope you got off to a good start. Uh, that's very important to me, and I'm hoping it's very important to you. Uh, don't slack off now, and then things will go great uh, for you the rest of the year, and that's, that's most important. Uh, no grades, no basketball. No behavior, no basketball. But yeah, I want to talk a little bit about this Caitlin Clark and the Angel Reese thing. I'm sorry that it's become such a racial divide, I'll say. It, it, it's sad. Um, if you say something about Caitlin that people don't like, then right away you're racist. Um, if you say something that ain't about Angel that people don't like, then you're labeled a racist. I think that's a bunch of insanity. And what people have to understand is I don't care what color you are. I care about the color of your heart. And I'm hoping some other people start kind of following my lead. But that's what's important is your character, the content of your character, not the color of your skin. But, yeah, uh, as far as the uh, rookie of the year, I think both ladies are should be co-rookie of the year. And I mean that. I, I'm not joking at all. I think they both should be co-rookie of the year. Uh, Caitlin has done some great things uh, with her team. Uh, she's shooting 41%, not very good. Shooting 33% from three, not very good. Uh, and she's averaging five turnovers. But she does a lot of good things. Uh, she's averaging eight assists a game. She's averaging uh, almost 18 points a game. And she's averaging almost six rebounds a game. But even the stats, that's not what I factor in. I factor in, do you make your team better? And that's what I've seen her doing. Um, her offense is very, very, it's going to only get better. Defense uh, is still a work in progress, but she's putting in a lot of effort. And I know people think just because you average a steal or whatever, that means you're playing great defense, but that's so false. And averaging a block doesn't necessarily mean you're playing great defense. If you're playing 35, 40 minutes, I think you can get one block or one steal. So, but overall, I think she's playing well. She's raised the level of her team. Uh, Kelsey Mitchell seems to play well when she's around. Um, well, Kelsey plays well either way. Uh, Miss Hall has played well. Uh, you got Aaliyah Boston has played well. Uh, they have to get a little more from Nalissa Smith, but I know Nalissa will pick it up uh, as we get down near playoff time. And as far as Angel Reese, a lot of people talk about her missing shots. She's shooting 39% from in close and all that nonsense and stat padding her rebounds. First of all, every time you miss, there's no one on the floor that's letting you get rebounds. So if the other ladies can't stop her from getting three or four shots, whether she misses them or not, but she stays relentless and keeps pounding the board, if other teams can't stop that, that's on them. You can't blame her for that. The effort that she plays with is why I see her as a co-rookie of the year. It's not her shooting three-pointers. I know a lot of you are enamored with the three-pointers and all that behind the back and all that stuff. But as a guy that's been around this game all my life, and I'm 61 years old, I know that there's so much more to the game than going through your legs and dribbling around your back. It's impact. If you take Angel off of the uh, Chicago sky, they're one of the bottom teams in the league. Her effort, her defense, her relentlessness, those, those things matter. She's getting 20 rebounds, 22 rebounds, you think she's out there playing by herself? No, she's not. There are nine other players on the floor, and there are five other ones out there that's trying to stop her from getting every rebound that she gets. So you got to factor that in. If you take her off the Chicago sky, where are they? They're down at the bottom. You take Caitlin off the fever, they're down at the bottom. And what I like so much about Angel is that she knows that she's not the greatest offensive player as far as scoring the ball. But there's other things called setting really good screens, you know, getting players open. That kind of stuff matters. And people need to start focusing on that. And as far as Caitlin, I know she's going to continue to get better. Her shooting's going to get better. Uh, she's already gotten stronger after over the Olympic break. So she's only going to continue to improve. Uh, Angel being re relentless as she is, she's going to continue to get better. Uh, her shooting's actually already getting better. It's a set shot with that left hand, that one hand, and uh, one, eventually, hopefully, she'll be able to take a few dribbles and shoot off the dribble. 
right now it's just a set shot um if you watch her take 10 shots they're all set shots not one dribble but she's she's making a higher percentage than she was making early in the season so that means she is improving both ladies have been fantastic for the WNBA a lot of people think a lot of this notoriety is just because of Caitlin it's not because if we're talking about Angel as well, that means she also is playing a part in it. And they're setting records. Both ladies are setting records. Uh, Caitlin has set some uh, Rookie of the Year records, and uh, Angel has set some N- some WNBA records. And get ready to break another one. Get ready to break Tina Charles' rebound record. She's probably already broken the offensive rebound record, but now she's on, she's hunting down, hunting down the uh, rebound record. She's averaging about twelve point nine rebounds a game. I believe the highest so far has been 11.6. That's the record. She's at 12.9. So all of these things factor in. Um, Stop thinking that it's just about flash, how well you can dribble around cones and all that kind of stuff. That's that's not basketball. It's can you raise the level of your team's play? And both ladies have have done that. So for me, they're both co-rookies of the year. I can't separate one from the other. And young people, back to you again. Please, please keep hitting hitting those books. Hit the books, the books, the books, the books. That's your first priority. And when you take care of that, everything else will fall in the line. Everybody have a great day. And I'll talk to you again soon. Uh, For those that you want to chat with me on uh, YouTube, go to Derek Gervin. Please subscribe to my page, uh, Derek Gervin, former NBA player. Once again, Derek Gervin, D-E-R-R-I-C-K. Last name Gervin, G-E-R-V-I-N. Uh, subscribe to my page, please, on, on, on YouTube. Let's talk some hoops. I don't mind at all. Um, then check out our show as well on uh, Monday through Friday, Sweep the League uh, podcast. We do uh, from 9 p.m. We do at 9 p.m. And those that we do early in the day, Monday and Wednesday, we re-show them. We show them again at 9 p.m. So you can catch me five days a week, uh, Sweep the League. And I'll talk to you again later on because I've started doing my own show again. Uh, My show is called Derek Gervin's As Good As It Gets. If you're interested, pull it up and look at all the shows I've done. Some of the greats that I've interviewed, the Oscar Robertsons, the Dr. J's. I can go on and on. Dick Vitale, a lot of the greats. Check it out. It's on YouTube. Oh, no, my that, I'm sorry. It's on all you do is Google. Derek Gervin's As Good As It Gets podcast. Everybody stay safe out there. Talk to you again soon. Have a fantastic day.